Hello, I'm Paul Lewis Metzger, the Director of the Institute for Cultural Engagement, New Wine, New Wineskins, and I'm here with my good friends and colleagues, Phil Berlin, Cliff Chappelle, and Mikey Lemon. Uh, we've been friends and ministry partners uh, at Multnomah University Seminary in New Wine, New Wineskins for a long time, and I'm just grateful for your time today and as we discuss this issue of when can we breathe again? Thoughts on institutional racism. Thanks, gentlemen, for joining me today to talk about this subject. It's denied. Mm -hmm. um, the majority population have, um, because of their privilege, they have the privilege of naming racism and defining it. And when a, when a black person comes in and say, well, this is racism, begin to point it out, um, who have not been involved in the conversation or the naming, um, they will deny because it doesn't fit the definition that the majority of the white population have defined. Examples of them. Yeah, I think Cliff gave a good, a good description there. Um, some examples to, some examples to kind of delineate the two. Um, so what the former police officer from Minneapolis did would look at his action by itself and say, in part, that that was maybe just an action of racism with him kneeling on George Floyd's back until he passed away. That is an extreme act of racism, but the possibility that he wouldn't go to jail and a lot of what enraged a lot of folks that he wouldn't be held accountable for those actions would be an example of institutional racism where we have an individual that does something against a person of color and society has a system that allows them to get away with without any accountability for this issue at all. And that's the part that's really a part of the culture where a part of life where it's almost like breathing so much so that you know we had a nfl coach just a little couple of days ago say hey i don't see racism at all in the nfl if life was run like a football team things would be great and everyone else looked at him like what are you talking about there's only one person of color that's an owner in the nfl there's only so many coaches that are African-American or not white as coaches in the NFL. So how could you not see racism? But this is just the way we live. And so it's almost like air, um, the fact that we live um, among institutional racism. Thoughts? Yeah, the question of why now, and I think that's the question why now, even past football for all of us, why are we receiving text messages now from our friends, from our white friends? Uh, the world hasn't changed from what it was two weeks ago. The, the change is now there's people protesting. Right. Um, but, but why why weren't people seeking us for these, these conversations before? Why why weren't people asking our advice or our thoughts on systematic racism before? Uh, but as for the NFL and Mr. Goodell, um, why now? I, I'm not confident he would have made that comment if his top players didn't hold his feet to the fire. Mm -hmm. What shortly preceded his statement? His statement was in response to his top superstars crying out, saying, I am George Floyd. I am Tamir Rice. I am Trayvon Martin. That is me. And they, what would you do if, if, if I was gunned down? And, and so it's completely in response. Why is he willing to make the statement now? A few years ago? It was just the commissioner, 32 owners, and a military of lawyers against Colin Kaepernick. But now he's got his top stars saying, we're calling for change. Mm 